Hello friends, welcome to the last part of this tutorial and we are going to continue with the installation of the FPV system. Using the 3D printed 10 degrees camera mount, we will place the camera at the front of the vehicle. Screw both the camera and the frontal plate to the mount. After mounting the camera, connect the 3-pin cable. To install the FPV video transmitter, I decided to cover it with tape so it is more protected. Then connect the 5-pin cable and cut the wire in the upper bracket. I'm assuming that they already know how to solder the cut wire, so don't forget to cover them with heat shrink. Use zip ties to attach the radio to the top plate. Using M3 by 6mm screws, fix the top plate to the frame. I decided to reposition the antenna, passing it through the slot in the plate. To protect the radio controller, receiver antenna, we're going to use the zip ties. Install them as close as you can to the receiver. They're going to be the support base. Pass the antenna through the same hole on the plate. Cut two pieces of zip strings at the same length as the zip ties and cover both the zip ties and the antenna. It's not necessary to apply heat on them. To configure the flight controller, we will use the Open Pilot Ground Control Station that we used previously. Open it and connect the flight controller to your computer using a mini USB to USB cable and wait until the board runs the starting process. Please try not to move at all the board while doing this. Click in the big screen button called Vehicle Setup Wizard. It is very important that you always remove the propeller from your vehicle while performing the configuration to avoid injury. Once you have removed your propeller, click Next. Upgrade your firmware if necessary by clicking in the Upgrade button. If you already have the latest firmware, you can skip this step. After the system loads the firmware onto the board, you must disconnect it and connect it again and then press Next. On the Signal Configuration tab, you can choose which kind of receiver you are going to use. We are going to use a traditional PWM receiver, so we must select that option. But you can also connect a PPM receiver, an SBUS receiver, or a satellite receiver. Once you choose the desired option, click Next. In the Vehicle Type Selection tab, select the Multirotor option and click Next. On the next tab, we can select the different possible configurations for a multi-rotor. Please choose the Quadcopter X option and click Next. Now we must choose what kind of output signal we are going to use. We are using Rapid ESCs in this build, so that's the option we are going to select. One shot option is not available for these ESCs. Click Next. Now the system will show you a summary of the previous configuration. Please read the text on the tab for more information and then click next. Now it's necessary to calibrate the accelerometer. The vehicle must be placed in a level surface and any movement must be avoided while running the calibrate. Hit the calculate button and wait until say it's done, then click next. After this, we must execute the ESC's calibration procedure. So follow the instructions given on the tab, and again, don't forget to remove the propeller while doing this. Click on the checkbox to confirm that you are following the instructions.
and then press the start button. Once prompted, connect the battery and listen to the tones emitted by the ESCs. After the single tone, press the stop button. And disconnect the battery. And now we have calibrated the ESCs. Connect the battery again and perform the motor neutral point calibration. Click the start button and move the slider until the motor highlighted starts spinning. Repeat the same procedure with the other three ESCs. On the next screen, we will have the option to choose between some pre-configured parameters based on some common airframe types. But in this case, we are going to select the current tuning option. Hit the save button to upload and save the parameters to the board. Now we are moving to the transmitter setup wizard. You must turn on the radio. The system will disable the arming options to avoid arming the motors by accident while configuring. Click OK and then Next. We are going to set the airplane or aqua mode on the radio internal options and select the same option in the wizard. Click Next. In this case we're using a radio in mode 2, so choose that option and then click next. Move each control one at a time according to the instructions on the radio on the screen. The system will detect the movement and will assign the corresponding channel automatically. Next, toggle the flight mode switch. And since we're not using the other switches, we will click on the next button three times until the wizard prompts you to center all the sticks and switches to detect the travel path for each one. Click next and then move the sticks and switches to their maximum extent on both directions. After this, Check that the physical movement on your sticks matches the movement of the virtual radio on the screen. If you detect that the movement on the screen is the opposite to the real radio, then invert the movement by clicking on the corresponding checkbox. Click next and select the arming settings and the arming timeout. I'm gonna set the arming timeout in 10 seconds, which means that after 10 seconds the motors won't be armed anymore. After this, click on the save button. On the description of the video, you can download the parameters that I'm using on this build and you can upload it by clicking on the file tab then import UAV settings and then find the location where you save the file and then click open now all you have to do is hit the save to board flash button and then you will get all the parameters I'm using on this build
You might have to adjust the flight mode's configuration by choosing which parameter bank are you going to assign to each mode. I am using bank 1 for flight mode 1, which is attitude, and flight mode 2, which is gratitude. And then I'm gonna use bank 2 for the flight mode number 3, which is rate. Use this configuration as a starting point. You might adjust them according to your preferences later on. Click save. There are two ways to modify the parameters on OpenPilot, the basic and the advanced configuration. Use the slides on the basic configuration to adjust the amount of responsiveness that you want on your quad. On the bank one, increase the attitude and rate yell to have a more responsive quad while flying on attitude and ratitude mode. On the bank number 2, increase the rate yaw and the rate slider to have a more responsive quad while flying in rate mode. Adjust the amount of expo desired on each axis. This will give you softer control around the center and more aggressive control on the end. The PATs provided on this configuration should make your quad fly really stable. Finally, you must adjust the orientation of the board. Since we mounted it 90 degrees to the left, go to the edited section and type 90 on the yaw parameter, then click save. Now we are ready to test our quad. Press disconnect button. We hope that this tutorial could help you to build your own racing drone. If you like it, please share it and don't forget to subscribe. Thanks for watching.